Okay. So, in the last lecture, what we saw was um, uh, that if you took a linear plant, which is positive real, and the definition of positive real has these um, ambiguities, but uh, what we effectively would mean is that the Nyquist plot lies in the right half plane and the system, the given system is linear. Now, if you take such a plant and uh, uh, then such a plant is of course, passive. Now, uh, if you now take uh, non-linearity such that the characteristic of the non-linearity lies in the 0 to infinity sector, then one can think of that non-linearity also as being a passive system. As a result, what happens is when you interconnect the linear system given by a, a transfer function which is positive real with a non-linearity which is in the 0 infinity sector, then you end up with a resulting system which when you do not give any input is asymptotically, uh, I mean uh, of course, the origin is uh, an equilibrium point of this uh, system without inputs and uh, this system is asymptotically stable. In fact, when uh, the transfer function is taken to be strictly positive real, then you can say more. In fact, you could say that the resulting system is exponentially stable. Okay. So, let me just uh, reiterate uh, uh, what I have just said um, in terms of some diagrams, so that uh, you it would be clear to you what I am uh, trying to say. So, what we are doing is the following. So, you have a linear plant G s and you have this feedback connection and you have this non-linearity. So, this negative feedback. Okay. Now, um, this linear plant that you have, we are saying that this linear plant is positive real. Of course, in the last class, I had given uh, various uh, uh, interpretations of what we mean by positive real, but what, uh, what I would mean by positive real here is that the Nyquist plot of this plant is in the right half plane and in addition G s is stable. Okay. Of course, uh, one could uh, also use the definition of positive real to say that uh, G s plus uh, G transpose uh, S star is greater than or equal to 0 for all real uh, for all s whose real part is positive that is another equivalent definition. Okay. Now, by uh, making this assumption, okay, so let me write down G s is uh, positive real and stable. Okay. Now, if I call the input of this G s as u and the output of G s is y, then uh, what it means when you say that G s is positive real and stable is uh, that u transpose y is greater than equal to v dot, where v is the storage function of G s. We have already uh, talked about what the storage function could be and uh, uh, in order to find out what the storage function could be, we invoke the positive real lemma or the Kalman Yakubovich lemma uh, from where we get this matrix P and uh, uh, you know if, if you recall uh, when you have G s to be positive real and stable, then that is equivalent to this uh, set of equations. That means, if you, if you take uh, the minimal representation for uh, g of s to be a x plus b u y equal to c x plus d u. Then uh, using these matrices, you can write down that there exists uh, a p which is positive definite and two other matrices l and w such that first of all a transpose p plus p a is equal to minus l transpose l 
and then you have P B is equal to C transpose minus L transpose W and uh, lastly you have W transpose W is equal to D plus D transpose. And so, this P that you get which is positive definite you take the storage function V to be x transpose p x where this p is this p that you get from the positive real lemma. Okay? Now, what about the nonlinearity? Now, the nonlinearity that one picks is uh, of the following kind. So, the nonlinearity, so let me draw that uh, diagram once more. So, here you have the nonlinearity we are calling this output of the linear thing u, uh, sorry the output y and the input u. Okay. Let me call the input of the nonlinearity psi and let me call the output of the nonlinearity phi. Okay. Now, the nonlinearity is such that if you draw the characteristics of the nonlinearity, so you have xi on this axis and you have phi on this axis then the nonlinearity is something that lies in the first and the third quadrant. Now, if it lies in the first and the third quadrant, then it is very clear that uh, if you multiply the input of the nonlinearity which is psi to the output of the nonlinearity which is phi, then psi or psi transpose phi if uh, one is considering the vectorial uh, the vector situation that means multi input multi output situation this is clearly greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Now, since this is greater than or equal to 0, uh, one can say that uh, this nonlinearity has a storage function v 1 which is uh, the 0 storage function. Okay. Now, uh, earlier in the, in the last slide, I had said that you have u transpose y is greater than or equal to v dot where this v was given as x transpose p x with this p coming from the uh, positive real lemma. Now, if you look here, there are these interconnection equations which is y is equal to psi and phi is equal to minus phi is equal to minus u. Therefore, this psi transpose phi in fact psi transpose phi is really equal to minus u transpose y and this is greater than or equal to 0. So, if you add this equation and this equation you end up with 0 is greater than or equal to v dot. Now, what this means is that if you use this v that is x transpose p x as a Lyapunov function for this closed loop system assuming that this input the external input is 0. So, if you have the external input to be 0 this is like a, a system with no inputs and this system with no inputs will have these conditions satisfied and if you have these conditions satisfied then you have 0 is greater than or equal to v dot and if you take v to be x transpose p x and uh, that is then that can act like a Lyapunov function of for this closed loop system. And then what we have here is that its derivative is less than or equal to 0. So, in fact from that you can conclude that this resulting system is stable. Now, uh, if you if you remember we had also talked about the uh, Kalman Yakubovich Popov lemma. What we had said was that if you take this thing to be strictly positive real okay so maybe i will mark that with black then uh, the change in the equations are that instead of this you will get minus epsilon p also into this equation into this first equation all the other equations remain as they are but what this means is when you substitute in here instead of v dot being less than or equal to 0, you will get 0 is strictly greater than v dot. And as a result, because of that epsilon epsilon p which is there, 
using the kalman yakubovich lemma if this gs was taken to be strictly positive real then we would uh, uh, we can conclude expon exponential stability okay so what we are going to do in this class is uh, we will now explore uh, what new conclusions we can draw using this rather powerful result okay uh, maybe before we do that i would like to use this uh, this v as uh, which we have got from this uh, positive definite matrix p as a lyapunov function and show that this resulting system is um, uh, is asymptotically stable well uh, in order to show that i essentially only have to show that u transpose y is uh, greater than or equal to v dot and then the rest of it we have already seen that means if you take u transpose y greater than or equal to v dot and uh, you already know when you take a nonlinearity like this that psi transpose phi is greater than or equal to 0 and when you sum both of this you get 0 is greater than or equal to v dot so all you have to show is that u transpose y is greater than or equal to v dot okay uh, one uh, small um, adjustment uh, of a constant i have to do i should not be taking v as x transpose px but i should be taking this as x transpose px by 2 yeah half so now if we take uh, that then so v we are taking to be a half x transpose px so then in that case v dot is half x dot transpose px plus a half x transpose px dot but we know that x dot is ax plus bu from the uh, equation uh, equation of the uh, of the system uh, of the linear system so substituting that in here we will get uh, a half of uh, x transpose a transpose p plus from here similarly so p a x plus i would get half u transpose b transpose p x uh, plus half x transpose p b u okay now this from the kalman yakubovich lemma or uh, rather the positive real lemma this is the same as minus l transpose l so i can put that in there and if i look at these two terms pb uh, we know that one of the equations that we have from the positive real lemma is pb is equal to c transpose minus l transpose w so for pb i can substitute c transpose minus l transpose w and similarly for this so i'll just expand this out and show what that comes to so a half x transpose p b u becomes a half x transpose c transpose u plus uh, or rather minus a half x transpose l transpose w u okay now uh, if you look at the output equation of the linear plant you have y is equal to cx plus du and so the cx i can substitute as y minus du and once i do that i get a half y transpose u minus a half u transpose d transpose u so this is from this x transpose pbu from this thing you would get exactly the transposes of this so when you put them all together then you end up with v dot is equal to minus a half x transpose l transpose lx that accounts for this and then from both of this you will end up with u transpose y because this half and then we the another half coming from there and then uh, you have this term and there'll be a similar term coming from the other portion and so putting both of them together you will have u transpose d transpose u and you'll have u transpose du and d plus d transpose 
one of those equations that you had was d plus d transpose is equal to w transpose w the positive real lemma gave us this equation. So, using that you will get u transpose w transpose w u a half of that okay. and then these last two terms which uh, okay. So, uh, there will be this term and the transpose of this both with an a minus sign. And so, if I put all of them together, then what I end up with is v dot is equal to first of all u transpose by which we had here and then these two terms and uh, the other two terms this and its transpose putting them all together you will get minus half L x plus w u the whole thing transpose L x plus w u. And now, you see this quantity here is a positive quantity and therefore, you can conclude v dot is less than equal to u transpose y and this is essentially what we wanted in order to conclude from this sheet that u transpose y is greater than or equal to v dot 0 is greater than e and uh, you already have this about the nonlinearity, and when you put both of them together you get 0 is greater than or equal to v dot and therefore, you can show you can show uh, uh, stability. Now, if one assumes that g of s is uh, strictly positive real, then in that case in this equation here a transpose p plus p a, there will be one additional term here and this additional term if I call it epsilon p, this additional term, this additional term will finally end up in the last equation and here you would have minus epsilon x transpose p x and this will now let us prove that the resulting system is in fact asymptotically stable. Now, uh, what I am going to do is I am going to make use of this um, rather powerful theorem and I am going to look at all kinds of nonlinearities and uh, derive new results about which nonlinearities with the when uh, put in a feedback connection with uh, a certain kind of linear plant would result in an asymptotically stable system. Okay. So, let me conclude about this first. So, what I am saying now is suppose you take a nonlinearity Well, let me call it f that belongs to the 0 infinity sector. Now, when I say that a nonlinearity belongs to a 0 infinity sector, what I mean by that is that if psi is the input of the nonlinearity and this is f of psi the output of the nonlinearity, then this nonlinearity lies in the 0 to infinity sector that means it lies either in the first quadrant or in the third quadrant okay if you have any such nonlinearity any nonlinearity which belongs to this class and you take a g of s which is stable and strictly positive real then this feedback connection of the strict, strictly positive real stable plant with the nonlinearity results in something which is asymptotically stable. But uh, suppose now the nonlinearity that we consider is this particular nonlinearity. Now, if you consider this particular nonlinearity, then uh, you can you can see that of course, it is true that this nonlinearity lies in the 0 infinity sector, but in fact you can say more things about this nonlinearity because suppose I draw a slope like this call it k 1 and suppose I draw another slope um, let us say like that call it k 2. Then in fact, this nonlinearity f lies in the k 
K1K2 sector. So, what I am trying to say is that the nonlinearity is such that K1 is less than equal to F xi by xi, which is less than equal to K2. So, uh, in some sense, by uh, declaring F to be in this sector from 0 to infinity, uh, we are doing an overkill because uh, we can get a much tighter bound for the nonlinearity, and in fact, we can say that the nonlinearity lies in this sector k1, k2. In fact, out here, as you can see, okay, uh, so here the way I have drawn it, of course, the k2, there is some portion here of the characteristic which has the slope k2, but uh, instead of writing this, sometimes uh, people would write something like this k1, k2, an open interval k1, k2. Now, uh, when you mean an open interval k1, k2 or a closed interval k1, k2, the difference between them is essentially to do with these inequalities, whether they are strict inequalities or just uh, you know non-strict inequalities. So, when you have non-strict inequalities, then you would put the closed bracket. When you have uh, strict inequality, you would put the open bracket. Yeah, and of course, there would be semi-open, semi-open, semi-closed kind of intervals also for the nonlinearity. Okay, now um, fine because this nonlinearity lies in the zero infinity sector. Therefore, we know that if you take any stable, strictly positive, uh, strictly positive real. Uh, transfer function and uh, connect it in this feedback loop with this particular nonlinearity, you will get an asymptotically stable system. But um, since we can put a tighter bound on this nonlinearity, that means this nonlinearity actually lies in the k1, k2 sector. Therefore, one would expect that apart from these plants, there are other plants also which you could uh, uh, you could connect with this nonlinearity and these plants may not be belonging to this class that means they may not be strictly positive real or stable but despite that the resulting system is asymptotically stable and uh, the the reason one, one uh, why one would believe that is because it is true that this particular nonlinearity is in the zero infinity sector, but in fact we can say that it is in the k1, k2 sector. And so, if it is in the k1, k2 sector, it would be very surprising if there are no extra plants that uh, one can connect to the nonlinearity, resulting in the system being stable. I mean, one would naturally expect that there would be more plants that you can connect to the nonlinearity, and the resulting system is uh, is uh, asymptotically stable. Okay. So, now what we are going to do is we are going to explore this situation where you have the nonlinearity given in a certain sector and one wants to characterize all the all the transfer functions which you can connect in this feedback loop with those nonlinearities such that the resulting system is asymptotically stable. Okay? So, now in order to do this what we would do is uh, we will do some characterization of uh, the various kinds of nonlinearities. Uh, so, let me let me begin by uh, uh, looking at certain uh, classes of these nonlinearities and I will show that these uh, nonlinearities uh, can be transformed into a nonlinearity in the zero infinity sector. Okay. Yeah, uh, let me uh, let me uh, make this clear uh, uh, by uh, by some examples. Okay. So suppose you have a nonlinearity belonging to the k k one infinity sector. Okay. What do we mean by saying that uh, a nonlinearity belongs to the k1 infinity sector? Well, what we mean is, okay, so here is this, uh, oh God, okay, here is this line k1. Ah, let me use a new sheet uh, rather than 
Okay, so we want to talk about this f which is in the k 1 infinity sector. Okay, so what we mean by that is uh, so this is a line with slope k 1 and if the nonlinearity is in the k 1 infinity sector that means it lies here and here. So, it could be something like that. Yeah. In other words, the nonlinearity is such that f psi by psi, where psi is the input of the nonlinearity and f psi is the output. This is less than infinity, but greater than or equal to k 1. Okay. Now, if you have a nonlinearity like this, we can convert this into a nonlinearity in the zero infinity sector. Okay. Now, uh, how does one uh, convert this into a nonlinearity in the zero infinity sector? Well, the if you have if you have a nonlinearity in the zero infinity sector then the following is true psi times h of psi is greater than or equal to 0. Now, for a nonlinearity which lies in this sector this is true, but this is true is the same as saying okay, f of psi minus k 1 of psi. Okay. So, for example, if I look at this particular psi, so this is a f of psi and so f psi minus k 1 psi is this portion here which is positive. Hmm. On the other hand, if I take a psi which is negative, then f of psi is here and this is k 1 psi and therefore, this quantity here is in fact negative, this quantity here is negative. So, if now this thing, well, let me put a transpose is multiplied to psi, then here you see you get a positive quantity multiplying positive. So, the resulting thing is positive. In the, in the left half, you have a negative thing multiplying negative. So, the resulting thing is positive. So, for any nonlinearity which lies in the k 1 infinity sector, we can say that this condition is always satisfied. Now, if this condition is satisfied, then this is what we do. So, this is slope k 1 and you have a nonlinearity like that. And uh, what we had just written was uh, okay. So the input of the nonlinearity is psi, and f of psi is the output of the nonlinearity. So if you think of this nonlinearity like this, and let me call the input psi, and the output is f of psi. Then uh, w one way we could characterize such a such a nonlinearity is by this quadratic quadratic form which is f psi minus k 1 psi transpose psi is greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Therefore, now if you think of, okay, so this is the output phi, if you think of a nonlinearity, some new nonlinearity, which has the same psi as the input, but it has phi tilde as the output, where this phi tilde is really f of psi minus k 1 psi. Then this nonlinearity, this new nonlinearity will have the property that phi tilde transpose psi is greater than or equal to 0 
and therefore this new nonlinearity or uh, let me call it N NL1 is passive. Now, how does one obtain NL1 from NL? Well, one way to obtain NL1 from NL is the following. So, you have the original nonlinearity and it has the input psi and if it has the input psi, it will give the output which let me now call it phi. Okay? But you want a new nonlinearity which does not give phi as the output, but gives phi tilde as the output. So, how to get phi tilde as the output? You want to use the same psi as the input. Well, if I take a k 1 here. So, k 1 times psi will, is what I will get. And I use a feed forward, then what I will have here is phi tilde, which is phi minus k 1 psi. And so now, if I think of what, what is in this dotted box as my new nonlinearity, it has as its input psi and it has as its output phi tilde and this phi tilde transpose psi is greater than or equal to 0. So, this resulting nonlinearity is in fact passive. Now, therefore, this resulting nonlinearity, if it is now connected in a feedback loop with a plant which is strictly positive real, then the resulting system is asymptotically stable. So, uh, let me let me draw that. So, you have this nonlinearity. So, you have psi and you have k 1 of psi. Fed forward. Okay, so, it is still psi here. So, the original nonlinearity had this uh, output phi, but this new nonlinearity has the output phi tilde. And now, if this phi tilde is connected to some G s, where this G s is uh, strictly positive real and stable, then the resulting system is of course, I mean using, using our earlier results, whatever we had concluded earlier using the positive real lemma and so on, we can conclude that this resulting closed loop system is um, asymptotically stable. Uh, but now, we are interested in knowing not what can be connected to this new nonlinearity, but what can just be connected to this nonlinearity, what plants can be connected to this nonlinearity and the resulting system would be asymptotically stable. So, what I am now going to do is I am going to do a set of uh, transformations and uh, these transformations go under the name of loop transformations and by loop transformations we can actually conclude or we can uh, um, find a much larger class of, um, uh, of plants which you can uh, connect to the nonlinearity and the resulting system would be asymptotically stable. Okay. So, this is what we do. So, what we are going to do is, so here is a linear plant and here is a nonlinearity and we are assuming that this nonlinearity is in the k 1 infinity sector. Okay. And we would like to know
that when you do this feedback connection, what are the linear plans? Okay, so the question we would ask is the following how to characterize all linear plants which when connected to nonlinearity in the K1 infinity sector results in asymptotic stability. Okay. So, now let me call the input to the linear plant u and the output y and let me call the input to the nonlinearity psi and the output phi. Okay. Then of course, by the feedback connection, then you know u is equal to minus phi. Okay. And uh, you also know that the transfer function g is really y by u, but that is the same as psi by minus phi. Okay. Now, so earlier we saw that given this nonlinearity with input psi, output phi, such that this nonlinearity belongs to the K1 infinity sector, you can get a new nonlinearity. So, let me call it NL1, such that it has the same input but now the output is phi tilde such that this n l 1 is really it belongs to the uh, to the 0 infinity sector. Now, how does one get this n l 1 from this n l? We just saw earlier that one way to get this n l 1 from this n l is by using this feed forward where you take this gain k 1 and uh, feed it there and therefore, now what you have will be phi tilde. Now, you originally had a g of s here which you had interconnected with this n l. Okay. So, what I am trying to say is that you had this g s interconnected to the nonlinearity n l okay. and we call this u, we call this y, we call this psi, we call this phi. Okay. Now, one could modify this transfer function g of s into some new transfer function g 1 of s such that this g 1 of s will take this modified input, but give the same output as the original g of s. So, what we are trying to say is that we modify this g of s in some way such that it takes this u tilde as the input rather than the earlier u as the output, but gives the same output as g of s would give for u. Then we can calculate what this g 1 of s would be because this g 1 of s g 1 the transfer function g 1 of s is given by y divided by u tilde, but this is the same as saying xi divided by because y is equal to xi and u tilde is equal to phi tilde minus phi tilde, but this minus phi tilde we know is the same as psi this minus phi tilde is the same as minus phi. So, we had taken this phi tilde to be uh, 
we had taken this phi tilde to be phi minus k1 psi. So, I am just substituting for phi tilde. So, I have minus phi plus k1 psi. Now, uh, if you remember in the last slide, I had written that the original transfer function g is really psi by minus phi. So, dividing by minus phi in the numerator and the denominator, we get this g 1 is really the original g upon 1 plus k 1 g. Okay. So, what we are trying to say is the following. Okay. So, what we are trying to say is the following. So, if you had a nonlinearity psi phi and you had this g of s okay then this interconnection is exactly the same as the following interconnection where you have this nonlinearity the same nonlinearity at the before you keep the input to the nonlinearity exactly the same but for the output what you do is you put a k1 here okay so you fed forward this k1 psi and so now you have this new input phi tilde now this new input phi tilde you are feeding back then the resulting transfer function that you would have here which one called g 1 of s as we just derived in the last slide would be g of s upon 1 plus k 1 g of s, but that is the same as saying you have g of s and then you have 1 plus k 1 g of s what that means is you have this feedback structure g of s with fed back with k 1 s okay. and this resulting system. So, so when you put g s with this nonlinearity and this nonlinearity this nonlinearity is in the k 1 infinity sector and you have this nonlinearity. Now, you can convert this nonlinearity into something in the uh, in passive that means, uh, you can convert it into something in the 0 infinity sector by doing this feed forward. So, you have done a feed forward and uh, what have you done? You have forwarded the input to the output by this loop. So, along with the nonlinearity, you have given a feed forward, but uh, when you do this feed forward on this loop, on the open loop what you do is you would give a feedback with the same k 1 on the original plant that you had. And then this resulting plant along with this new nonlinearity. So, the new nonlinearity is what is inside this dotted box that I am putting along with this new linear plant which is what is there in the dotted box there. These two this combination is exactly the same as this combination. Okay. And now, if this combination is exactly the same now uh, by using this feed forward what we had done is this nonlinearity in the k 1 infinity sector you had converted it into a nonlinearity in the 0 infinity sector. Therefore, you know that for anything in the 0 infinity sector making use of the positive real lemma and uh, and the uh, results about passive systems and so on. This resulting system here if this is strictly positive real and stable then that along with this this resulting system is asymptotically stable, but that is since this system is equivalent to this system that is the same as saying that this system is asymptotically stable. Okay. Therefore, for a nonlinearity in the k 1 infinity sector given a g s that g s with that nonlinearity in a, a closed loop system 
this would result in asymptotic stability if when you modify g to this thing that means when you modify g to g1 where g1 looks like this gs upon 1 plus k1 gs and if this is strictly positive real and stable then the original system is going to be asymptotically stable. So, I, I hope uh, this is clear. So, what you are really doing is you are doing some sort of a loop transformation. Yeah. So, what you did is on the on the nonlinearity you gave a feed forward loop and uh, as a result on the linear plant you get a give a feed feedback loop both these loops have the same gain. So, there is a feed forward loop with negative gain here you have a feedback loop with a, a negative feedback. Now, as a result this modified linear plant along with this modified nonlinearity, they both together now you invoke the uh, positive real lemma or the Kalman Yakubovich lemma whichever one uh, is applicable and then you can talk about the stability of that resulting system and this resulting system is exactly equivalent to this system. So, therefore, you can say something about all the transfer functions which when interconnected to a nonlinearity in this particular sector will give asymptotic stability. Okay. So, what is the result? The result is that if you take any plant and you do this transformation of the plant, this transformation of the plant should result in this new plant G 1 of s being strictly positive real and stable. And if that is true, then the original plant G of s with this nonlinearity in the k 1 infinity sector is going to give you stability. Okay. Now, um, that was one special case where you took a nonlinearity in the k 1 infinity sector. Now, one could also think of taking a nonlinearity in the uh, 0 k 2 sector. So, if you take a nonlinearity in the 0 k 2 sector, so what will its characteristics look like? So, if I call this psi the input and this the output phi and I draw this line which has slope k 2. Since the nonlinearity lies in the 0 k 2 sector, that means nonlinearity is something like this. Okay. Or in other words, uh, phi by psi is less than equal to 0, uh, 0 is less than equal to phi by psi, which is less than equal to k 2. Okay. Now, um, if you have, uh, if you have a uh, nonlinearity in of this kind, then this particular inequality I could rewrite this in the following way. You see, if I take k 2 psi minus phi, so, so suppose I take some suppose I take some point psi. So, this here, this point here is k 2 psi and the corresponding phi is this. So, this quantity here is positive and for this particular case psi was positive. Yeah. Now, similarly, if I take psi to be negative, I get k 2 psi to be here and I get phi to be here. So, k 2 psi minus phi this is negative when psi is negative, but more importantly k 2 psi minus phi this quantity here is positive. So, I could uh, uh, I could write the following you see when psi is positive phi the corresponding phi is also positive. And here when psi is negative the corresponding phi is also negative. So, I could write the following down k 2 psi minus phi 
transpose multiplying phi the output when this is positive this is positive and when this is negative this quantity is negative this quantity is negative so this product is greater than or equal to 0 and uh, so what i have really done is i have looked at this nonlinearity and i have looked at uh, certain quadratic inequality which gets satisfied by any nonlinearity which lies in that sector and now what i am going to do is i am going to use this nonlinear this particular quadratic relation to modify my original nonlinearity in such a way that now it becomes a uh, nonlinearity in the zero infinity sector. Okay. So, how do I do that? I do something very similar to what I did the last time. So, here is the nonlinearity, here let me assume is the input and here is the output phi. Okay. Now, what I am going to do, the last time what we did was we kept the input the same and we modified the output. This time round, what I am going to do is I am going to keep the output the same but I am going to modify the input. So, the new input psi tilde is going to be equal to k 2 psi minus phi. Okay. How do I do this? Well, what I could do is I could um, take this nonlinearity, the output is still going to be the same phi, but the input the new input is going to be this psi tilde, but let me do the following. Let me put a gain here which is k2 inverse. So, now if I give k2 psi as the input here, then because of this k2 inverse, I will get psi here and then I have the original nonlinearity. So, what I am trying to do is I should get psi here such that I have the original nonlinearity. So, the original nonlinearity I am multiplying before you reach the nonlinearity, I am multiplying the input by k2 inverse. Okay. And uh, so, now I would use this output. Yeah and I feed this back right. So, now if I am to get psi here what I should get here is uh, k 2 times psi and so what I should get here should be k 2 psi plus phi. So, if out here Oh, sorry. So, I want k 2 psi minus phi here because that is what I want here and so what I will do is I will feed this back use a positive feedback. So, if I do k 2 psi minus phi here, if I have k 2 psi minus phi here and I am feeding back this phi, this phi will cancel out that phi and I will have k 2 psi here and then k 2 inverse will give me psi here. So, I have the original nonlinearity modified in this particular way should give me a nonlinearity like this. And this nonlinearity, so now if I box this off, this new nonlinearity has the same output as the original nonlinearity, but as the input it has k 2 xi minus phi. Okay. So, uh, it looks like uh, I am uh, out of time. So, uh, we will continue whatever we are doing in the next lecture.